Praise the Lord. You all join me in clapping your hands, if you will, applauding the Lord, applauding him. Let him know we welcome him in this place. For Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. We thank God for this Sunday morning. Thank God for another worship opportunity because certainly it is an opportunity to go before the throne of God, to go before him in his presence. Some of us already know that in his presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. There's no other place I'd rather be than to be in the presence of the Almighty God. As I've already said, God is good and his mercy endures forever. We give him all the praise, we give him all the honor and the glory. We thank God for those of you who decided to come into the house of the Lord today. We honor the Lord in the absence of my wife there in Hotland, the ATL. Amen. They're celebrating my mother in love birthday in my city, Atlanta, Georgia. Again, this is Sunday of Go Jags. Duval. Lord, you know it's me again. I'm coming to you again in prayer for my Jaguars. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless them to be strong and and I pray that you equip them to win today give them the mentality give them the spirit give them the mindset to go and win I pray everybody be healthy on each team nobody get hurt I pray you're covering over them but yet let the Jaguars win we ask that you would bless this service Bless us in a mighty way. We need you, Lord. We need you every hour. We need you every day. Come, Lord Jesus. Come in this house. Touch every mind. Touch every body. We pray, Lord, that you will give us a mind to serve you. Give us a mind to love you. Give us a mind to embrace you oh god our father let your divine will be done i need you today i need you to impart unto me your exousia impart your dunamis power in this house let the oil pour from heaven upon my head down to my feet. I pray God that the spirit of conviction run through this house. Let it run through this house. Let no one that came here today leave here the same. As the song says, I got a mind to live right. Give us that mind to live right. Give us that mind to walk right, talk right, to serve you right. In the name of Jesus we pray. And every heart said amen and amen again. God bless you. So we love 
this morning I saw one of my good friends matter of fact we were ace boom coons like Sput Mutt <laughs> Mutt and Jeff Spike Mike amen Ricky Derns amen what a pleasant surprise to see him walk through that door uh, we we got some stories I'm gonna keep them to myself amen I'm just so glad to see my friend I've been thinking about him. I've been intending to stop over there on on 23rd Street in Dawson, but it's just uh, it just haven't happened yet. But I had planned for it to happen. But but you know, God have a way. Want to do it? Amen. And God brought him to me, and I'm so happy. I was seeing him walking through the door. I wanted to yell out over the microphone. I, I had to get my composure and control myself 
because it was just that exciting to see my friend, amen, to see him. I had Kempe over here doing some work uh, a few weeks ago. That's the baby brother. And, um, and he told me that we talked about you. I said, I'm going, I'm, I'm coming over there to see old Ricky. Thank you, Ricky, for coming. Thank you for coming. You made my day. You made my, I know the Jaguars going to win now. Uh, I know they're going to win. <laughs> you know, my excitement level and going up higher. Amen. I'll uh, just say hi to my wife. Oh, amen. Over there in Atlanta. I see you online. Amen. But those of you who have your Bibles, we're going to talk about something today. I think that um, will help us all. Will help us all to to understand who we are. I was, um, I watched the oldie but goldie on last night. I, I just, I watched it intentionally. I turned it on, amen. Uh, my mind went back as I was thinking about this message that God gave me uh, for the believer. Second uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 10, chapter 10. 10 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and we're going to begin reading at verse number 3 for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. My mind goes back to when Jesus handpicked 12 men to partner with him to help him have an influence on the entire world to gallivant with him to sojourn with him and Jesus picked these 12 men and he didn't leave them without the same authority that he had you got to understand that when you're walking with someone that you carry on the same authority that they have if they're weak, you're going to be weak. If they're strong, you're going to be strong. You take on the demeanor of the individual that you hang out with. The scripture says that evil communication corrupts good manner. It pays who you hang with. It, ha it pays who you camarade with, who you communicate with, who you have relationships with these men because they had a relationship with Jesus Jesus did some dispersing Jesus equipped them Jesus told them in John I'm, I'm sorry in Luke chapter 10 uh, around that verse that 19th verse he said behold I give you power and I'm giving you authority I'm giving you power over all the the, the forces of the enemy. I'm giving you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. There's two things I want to gather from this particular uh, verse here and, and then we're going to flow with, with Paul over in, in Corinthians. But two things I want us to grab here and the two things are he, Jesus said to them, he said, I'm giving you power over all I'm giving you authority over all the power of the enemy. Your power exceeds the power of the enemy. You have no reason to be concerned about the devil, none whatsoever. You shouldn't, you shouldn't even be, he shouldn't even be a part of your conversation when it comes to, oh, the devil this or the devil that, the devil did this, the devil did, the devil gonna do this, the devil gonna do that. See, we as believers need to understand that the devil don't have no power over us. That's why I'm so happy that I'm saved. I'm, I'm no longer bound by sin, no longer controlled by the devil at his will. See, when I was unsaved, I didn't, I didn't know that, that the devil was controlling my life. I, I didn't know when I watched Flip Wilson and Flip Wilson said the devil made me do it, how true that really was. 
Uh, the devil make you do things you have no idea that you was you gonna do or you had no plans on doing you never thought you would be doing you never there were some places you find yourself you say how in the world did I get here the devil controls the lives of unbelievers he controls their lives and have them uh, participating in things indulging in things that they never thought that they would because they are controlled by his power but but God tells us as Jesus told his disciples that I'm giving you power over all the power of the enemy and listen to what he said and nothing and nothing and nothing absolutely positively nothing shall by any means hurt you I've been hurt in my life <laughs> Anybody been hurt? <laughs> I, I've been hurt in my life. But, 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 but I believe, I believe what, what Jesus was telling his disciples. He said, now you're going you're gonna to be whipped. You're going to be scourged. You're going you're gonna to be battered. You're going to be whipped on. And you're going to be tarred and feathered. These things going to happen. But, but watch this, what he says, though. He, what he said, that nothing shall by enemies hurt you. In other words, nothing going to take you out. <laughs> the weapons may be formed. The devil do come up with some stuff, y'all. You do come up with some tricks and some traps and some, some, some like the Bible would, would call it, said nets. He, he got little, 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 little traps that he tried to, he tried to make for the, for the, for the believers. And he said, said the devil, said he walks about seeking whom he may devour. Now, because he's on the alert, because he's lurking, because he's looking for somebody to destroy, because he's looking for somebody to bring harm to, you need not put yourself in the position where you be the one. Don't leave yourself vulnerable. And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about armed and dangerous. <laughs> we want to talk about armed. Somebody say armed and dangerous. I know Ricky can relate to that because we used to be that way when we was coming alone. Amen. We used to be armed <laughs> and dangerous. We were nothing to reckon with, nothing to play with. We, we, we really wasn't nothing to play with because we'd go in the, in the dark places in Jacksonville and, and amen, places you ain't got no business going. And we were teenagers. We, we were young bucks. <laughs> amen. And had, had the mentality of, of real G's. And I happened to develop myself into one one day, but we won't talk about that either. But, but, but oh, somebody say armed and dangerous. You, you, I, I'm not telling nobody. Now, don't y'all miss uh, understand my message because I'm not telling nobody to, to go and buy no guns. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not telling nobody to go and, 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 and buy no weapons of mass destruction. But, but, but what I am saying to you, you got to be ready. Don't let, don't let the enemy uh, come upon you and you're not ready. Somebody say armed and dangerous. Paul talked to these same uh, believers and, and he and I, and I love the way uh, Paul expound and exposited on the scriptures. Paul said in, the, uh, in Ephesians uh, chapter number six, he said, he said, put on. Somebody said, put on. Put on the whole armor. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able, listen to what he said, that you might be able to withstand. <laughs> That you might be able to withstand the tricks and traps of the enemy. See, see, when you got on guard, you prepared for anything. You, uh, I remember how clean we used to be, Ricky. I, I'm, I'm trying to hold myself, but, 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 but see, but see, I, but see, you got to be, you got to be ready, armed and dangerous. See, when you were back in the day, when we were clean, we were sharp, we were prepared for wherever we were prepared for where we were going and when you're armed and dangerous you're prepared for where you're going you shouldn't you shouldn't nobody i'm saying nobody should be lurking around here a lazy affair like they're like everything's all right everything ain't all right you better you better have your head on a swivel you you better you better be ready in 2023 for what's going on in this world you could be tending your own business, shopping in Family Dollar, and somebody come in with a with an automatic weapon and just start spraying the whole store. Why? Why would it? Why would somebody do that? Because the devil blind the minds of them that don't believe to do what he want them to do at his will. That could be me. That could be you. That the devil could be using to do to be doing some of this heinous, crazy stuff. 
harmful stuff, taking, taking in innocent lives that could be me or you that he could be using like that. But, but thank God I'm in a position to say I'm armed and dangerous. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm over on the Lord's side. Like Moses, when Moses, Moses was armed and dangerous, God didn't just send him to Pharaoh and then have him to be prepared. He had him armed. Somebody say armed and dangerous. Uh, uh, Moses had a rod. And that rod uh, was dangerous. <laughs> that rod was, was Moses' weapon. That, that, mo that rod was, was, was God saying, I'm with you, Moses. Yeah, I'm with you. Pharaoh decided he gonna call his magicians, call his sorcerers, and, and they're gonna come and, 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 and they're gonna uh, throw their snakes, uh, their snakes, turn their snakes on the ground. And, and the musicians, I think they was turning the sticks into snakes and, and they were doing something big. And Moses took his one rod and tossed it on the ground and, and it turned into a snake and ate all his snakes up. All ate all the snakes on the ground. All uh, Pharaoh's magicians, snakes and sorcerers, snakes up. Why? Because God was showing out. God shows up, God show out. <laughs> yeah, I know God show out because when he showed up in my life, he showed out. Because when people see me, they be wondering, who is that? Is that the same Missy boy right there? He, he, no, that can't be the same Missy. I know. Let me hang with him for a little bit and see if that's the same one. Y'all help me preach today. But, but see, what, what, what the Lord is telling us, that he wants us to be in a position of authority. Uh, Acts, Acts chapter 1. In verse 8, uh, he, Jesus was, was talking to his disciples in Luke chapter uh, 24, 49. The scripture says when he had came back, he, he came back on the third day. He had been resurrected and he came and he started hanging with the, with the disciples. Uh, he was cooking fish for them and he was uh, showing them the way. And then at that, uh, that 40, I believe it was 40 days, he had hung out with them for 40 days. And he told them, he said, now uh, go to Jerusalem. These other 10 days, I'm not going to be with y'all. I'm not going to be with you when you go to Pentecost because my time is up. Oh, y'all help me. He said, he said, my time is up being with you in person, but I'm still going to be with you <laughs> because he told them, I'll never leave you nor forsake you even to the end of the world. He told his disciples that. In other words, when you go to Jerusalem, you, you're going to take on the third the third party of the Godhead. You've already got God. You already got me and you're going to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, now you're carrying on all three of us. You're, you're containing us in your body. Somebody said you got it. See, that's why the Lord tells us he's always with us. See, some of us be looking around for him. You ain't got to look around for him when you got him in, on the inside. Somebody said something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. So here we go. Lord told his disciples, he told them that I'm giving you power over, over all forces of your adversary. See, one of the tactics of military is advantage. If any army wants to win, they got to have an advantage. And the first thing in the rule of war is that you want to attack your enemy's strength, not their weakness. Y'all help me now. <laughs> you want you want to attack their strength and not their weakness. See, we 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 got it all backwards. We think you're supposed to look for a weakness. You don't look for a weakness. You look for a strength because that's what's gonna get you. His weakness is not what's gonna take you out. His strength is gonna take you out. So so you look for his advantage. If he got an arsenal of planes, you want to knock the planes out. If you got tanks, you want to knock the tanks out. And, 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 and then you want, to, you want to take out his supply. Take out what's causing him to have an advantage. And here, God is telling us, I'm giving you an edge on the enemy. I'm giving you some power. I'm, I'm, I'm equipping you. I'm, I'm preparing you. I'm arming you for the enemy. There was a young man born by the name of Samson. Samson was born to slay, slay, destroy the Philistines. That was the purpose of his birth. 
His birth, God, God uh, brought him into this world so he can have an advantage over the Philistines. And God, and, and the way God did it, see, he, uh, 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 Samson was not a Philistine, but, but God used his birth uh, because he, he, he put some uh, inclinations in him. Somebody say inclinations. <laughs> he, he put some, some inclinations inside of Samson, um, Samson so Samson could have some desire to want to be with one of the girls uh, that was, uh, that's a Philistine. Uh, uh, it got his attention. Uh, Delilah. Somebody said Delilah. God used Delilah to put Samson in a position to which Samson would destroy all the Philistines. <laughs> uh, somebody said God got an egg. God got an edge. Says God, God, God will use your 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 weakness to His advantage. Can I get me somebody? I said God will use your weakness to His advantage because now watch this now. Don't you go looking at me funny because it was Paul that said when he went before the Lord three times and, and he went to him to, to ask the Lord to move this thorn in his flesh, this thing, the messenger of Satan that was buffeting him and bothering him and and and, and, and badgering him. And he went before the Lord three times and the Lord told him. He said, "Yo," he said, "My strength is made perfect." in your weakness. So you need to walk weak before God. Don't go before God like you Hercules or you Samson, you all that in a bag of chips. You got to always depend on God. Samson took the jawbone of an ass and slayed over 1,000 Philistine soldiers with the jawbone of of an ass. Y'all help me now. Now you know no man, no man could go against 1,000 men with the jawbone of an ass if God ain't with him. Here these men got swords and spears and they got bow and arrows. <laughs> they got all the advantages that they could possibly have with this man and because God was with him, he was able to, to, to destroy all of them with just a jawbone of an ass. If God is with you, you can, you can be the whole army with a pencil. Glory to God, because God is with you. See, God wasn't on the outside using Samson. He was on the inside using Samson. He was on the inside. And Jesus uh, used, uh, uh, told us in, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, And you shall receive power. You shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then when you have power, you're going to do something. You're going to be in action. The Holy Spirit comes in our lives to put us in action. Somebody said to be in action. Moses used his rod. Samson, the jawbone of an ass. And Elijah called down fire from heaven. And destroyed all the, the prophets of Baal. 450 to be exact, but, but what he called fire from heaven. Why? Because God gave him power. God gave him authority. See, without the authorization of God, we can do nothing. And he gave him authority. I want to use as an undersubject lethal weapon. Anybody ever see the movie Lethal Weapon? I love Lethal Weapon. Because one, one, of, one of the characters in, the, in the, uh, uh, Lethal Weapon, his name, uh, he was called Riggs. Riggs and Riggs was a detective. He had a friend. They were partners uh, by the name of Rogers. Rogers was, was the brother in the movie. He was the, the good guy and Riggs was the bad guy. Now what, what, what made Riggs so bad was the fact that the enemy attacked his family. His wife was pregnant. Uh, was, it was his girlfriend. She wasn't his wife at the time, and he, she she didn't know he didn't that he 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 wanted to marry or not. But or make he was make they made a family. But the enemy attacked his family. When when she got killed and his baby got killed with her. Uh, it, something happened to him. He, see, so he, 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 he changed from a, from a, from, from a, a good guy uh, to a bad guy. He got, he, 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 he when you say, somebody said, don't touch my family. Don't, 
don't, don't, don't touch my family. And see, we, we, think, we think the enemy uh, wants your house and your cars and, and, and your, he, don't want, he don't want none of that. He wants your soul. He, he, wants, he wants your belief system. He wants to attack your family. If he can get your family, he see, he wants a weakness. Somebody say he wants a weakness. The enemy is looking for a weakness. He's looking for a weakness. That's, see, in, in, in us, our weakness is our family. That ain't your strength. That's your weakness. Your strength is the Holy Spirit. And he's no match with the Holy Spirit. The enemy is no match at all with the Holy Spirit. Lethal weapon. Somebody say lethal weapon. And God has given us a lethal weapon. Somebody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is our lethal, lethal weapon. The Holy Spirit is our, uh, our weapon of mass destruction. We can handle anything, overcome anything when you have Holy Spirit in your life. You, 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 don't, you don't have to be trapped in nothing when you have Holy Spirit. Somebody say Holy Spirit. When you got the person of the Holy Spirit in your life, he, he's there. The, the, Jesus told his disciples, he said, I send you another comforter. A paraclete. The paraclete is one who works alongside of you. The one, the paraclete is helper. Somebody say helper. He helped you to do what you can't do. <laughs> oh. I said he helped you do what you can't do. Can I have your attention? Uh, I feel like a principal in here. Can I have your attention, please? <laughs> Y'all need to be focused on me and nothing else. Ain't nothing else in here more important than what's going on up here. But we need to understand that, that God has given us power. Somebody said power. Giving us authority. Lethal weapon. Uh, Riggs uh, had a death wish. See, see the, the devil can't harm you or hurt you or destroy you or, or, or play mind games on you when you got a death wish. <laughs> I don't mind dying. See, see, when you don't mind dying, the devil ain't got no upper hand on you. Riggs didn't mind dying. Riggs said after they killed his wife, uh, well, his girlfriend, <laughs> her fiance, and the baby. See, Riggs, Riggs had a death wish. He was the old boy. He was oh, he was on rampant then. He didn't care about nothing at that point because why? Because see, everybody was trying to trying to figure him out. They was wondering why he was nonstop. Why he would go after the enemy and he would he would just I mean he would just go on, on charge only. He he was just out of control. He he had his mind made up. You who who did it? Who killed my, my 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 future wife and my baby? Who did it? And and if he had to wipe the whole city out, he didn't mind because he was after the one who had killed his baby and his wife. I'm gonna just say y'all doesn't get away with saying wife. I know that wasn't his wife, but but he was gonna marry at some point. But 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 we got to understand that we got to know that the enemy don't care nothing about us. That the enemy was go stoop real low to get you. That's what they would. The reason why uh, uh, Riggs had had this death wish uh, is because he was after the bad guys, and the bad guys was mad because he was stopping them from doing what they were supposed to do. They was, he was taking the people that they were trying to sell. He was taking the people from them. And then so they figured they're going to find a way to get next to him. We're going to get rid of him. And they attacked his family. Somebody said, don't touch my family. Don't do that. And see that. And, and I love Paul. Thank you, Paul. Paul told us, he said, what, what sorrow, what sorrow that we have, we should have a, a sorrow. We, we should have a sorrowful indignatiously be mad at the enemy. You should be mad at the devil. You, you should look at some of the things the enemy have done to some of your people, some of your friends, and, and, and some of the people uh, in the world. You should, be, you should be mad at the devil. You should be saying, I'm going to get you for that. 
And the way you get the devil back, you got to, you got to serve the Lord. And the way you get the devil back, you got to have the upper hand on him. You got to, you got to be able to be in a position where you cast the devil out. You got to be in a position where you can, you can heal the sick. You got to be, be in a position the way you can let God use you to operate in the miraculous. Somebody said the miraculous. And here, Paul is writing. And Paul said, we might be living in the flesh, <laughs> but we don't war after the flesh. You ain't my enemy. You, you, you're not my enemy because you said something that, that hurt my feelings, because you said something that, that scarred me, because you hurt me. Now you, you're not the enemy. It's not you. It's the devil. Somebody say it's the devil. You want to win, you got to fight the right one. You got to fight the devil because you can kill me, but you don't kill the problem. It'll show up in somebody else. <laughs> Uh, uh, that somebody else is going to make you mad. And then what you going to do? Uh, what you going to do then? You going to kill everybody? You can't kill everybody. If you do, you'll be the only one left in the world and you can't make it by yourself. Y'all help me out. I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. And here's Paul. Paul said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Tell that person, say, don't hurt me. I'm not your enemy. The enemy is not me. The enemy is the one you can't see. The enemy is the devil. Somebody said the devil. The devil who Jesus described in John chapter 10 and 10. He said the thief come but for the steal and to kill and to destroy. But I came, I came that you might have life and have life in its abundance and in the full and in the overflow. I came to give you some real life. Somebody said real life. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought you was living uh, when you were drinking wild turkey. You thought you was living when you were drinking Boom Farm Strawberry Hill. You thought you was, was living when you were drinking you some Ripple. You thought you were drinking, you were doing good when you were drinking you some gin and juice. You thought you were doing the real deal. But when Jesus came into my life, I found out what real living really was. I, I thought it was in that, but it ain't in that. It's in this. It's in him. Somebody says it's in him. And Paul sums it up and he said, it's in him we live and move and have our being. It's all, it's all because of him. And I love the fact that Paul breaks it down and Paul said for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty somebody said but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds strongholds are, 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 are things that, 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 that get you and, and, and hold you down hold you in Trap and somebody said entrapment, yeah, entrapment just hold you in a position to where you can't get loose or you can't get out. It's a mind thing. Tell that neighbor, say it's a mind thing. See, the devil don't he don't get you by your hand, he gets you by your mind. He gets your mind, your hand will operate, your hand will cooperate when he gets your mind. But somebody said, I got to get my mind right. I got to get my mind right. Let me tell you how to get your mind right. You get your mind right by getting your mind washed in the word, which is the water of God. Uh, God's word will clean anything. That's what I love about God's word. It'll, do, it'll, it'll, it'll clean some areas you don't even see it having an operating. He's operating even with, when you don't even know he's operating. He's operating right now. He's operating in this room. He's operating inside of me. He's operating inside of you right now because the word of God will not return to him void. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It'll cut even to the marrow of the bones, dividing them asunder the, the, the the flesh and the spirit. Glory to God. Thank God his word cuts deep. The word of God cuts deep. And he said, casting down, I'm, I'm, somebody help me today, I'm preaching. He said, casting down imaginations. Imagination is imaginary. Somebody say imaginary. Imaginations is, you know, when you was a child, you'll sit down and you'd be daydreaming. You'd, you'd be sitting there just just looking in the, in the straight in the air. In other words, your mind is working, your imagination. And before you know it, Ricky, you'll pick up some paper and get you a, a pencil and start drawing stuff because your imagination is working. Your, your imagination is in operation. I wish I had me somebody. The, the imageries of the mind. Somebody said the imageries. 
The imageries of the mind. See, an artist thinks it first and then they put it on the canvas. You can't, you can't draw if you don't think it first. You can't write if you don't think it first. You don't do anything without thinking it first. Somebody say imaginary. It's all in your imagination. Uh, I remember I had to be around in the eighth, ninth grade. And there was this group that said, just my imagination <laughs> running away with me. Ooh. Yeah, it was just my imagination. See, and, and, that's, and that's what we got to understand. Uh, we got to cast down. Somebody said we got to cast down imagination because you can't do everything you think. Because it comes to your mind don't mean you got to do it. Somebody said you ain't got to do it. Everything that come to your mind, the imagination, your mind will play tricks on you. Somebody say your mind will play tricks on you and, and casting down imaginations and every, somebody say every, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You so tell that neighbor, say so you got to learn to, to bring things into obedience of Christ if it goes against the word of God say I'm pulling it down I'm pulling it down I'm pulling it down he said because if it is ex anything that, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God we should be pulling it down if it, if it exalts itself against God's knowledge we need somebody say we need to be pulling it down they pull it down and then he's, he goes on to say in verse number six and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Don't go around correcting people if you ain't got your act together. Oh, y'all help me. Uh, don't go around telling people what they ought to be doing and ought not to be doing and you ain't got your act together. One, one of the quickest ways of getting somebody not to do something is when you doing something. When you doing what you telling them not to be doing, oh, y'all help me. I remember growing up, my mama and them used to tell her, don't y'all be around here smoking these cigarettes and be, and be around here smoking. I better not catch you smoking and then they give you the cigarette and tell you to go light it for them. I, I, <laughs> oh, that's, I ain't never been able to understand that. <laughs> you, you constantly telling this child, take this cigarette to that stove because you're too lazy to get up and go and, and light the cigarette. All you're doing is forming a habit in that child. You got them going puffing and then before you know it, instead of them, because they say, oh, I don't want to do that. And before you know it, instead of them sticking to the stove and running and giving it to you, they're doing like this. Now they smoking. <laughs> Y'all help pass the day. <laughs> What? Because he's saying and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When you are obedient, then you can help somebody else. Now you can fight against disobedience. You can't fight against disobedience when you ain't obedient. How are you going to tell somebody to stop cussing and you cussing? You know, how bad, how bad that sound. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be, sound, oh, you sound so awful, you cussing like that. And then you get mad, you cussing. Are you going to tell somebody else to stop cussing? As a matter of fact, the people you tell them to stop cussing, you cussing them out. Somebody said, armed and dangerous. The enemy wants to disarm us. He wants to take advantage of us. That's what he wants. He wants to get an advantage of us. He wants to take advantage of the believer. He wants to, he wants to disarm me. He wants to, he, he know, he know God has given me power. He know I got more power than he have. He know that I'm over him. He know I'm above and not beneath. I'm, I'm the head and not the tail. The devil knows that. Says the devil know that. And he wants to disarm the believer. Somebody say how? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the enemy wants to disarm us and the way he disarm us, somebody say sin. Sin is his strategy. Sin is the devil's weapon of mass destruction. That's how he, he destroys the world through sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The way to destruction is sin. Somebody say sin. Break it down, Missy. Uh, what you mean, sin? Lying. Somebody said lying. 
Liar, liar, your pants on fire. Lying, lying, lying is a sin. Somebody said lying is a sin. You, 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 got, to, you got to be of the truth. You got to be a, a, a trial of truth. Somebody said truth. Uh, I, 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 I want to just say this because it's important to be said. My grandmother used to say, if you lie, you steal. And if you steal, you're killed. I guarantee you, if you've been a partaker of any of those things, you've been doing just that. You, you're on a trend, if you're lying, you're on a trend to stealing. And if you're stealing, you're on a trend of killing. Because when you steal something, you don't want nobody to know it. <laughs> you want to be the street. You want to be high go see. <laughs> you, 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 uh, uh, you don't want to be revealed. You want to be incognito. You, you want to be unscrupulous when you a thief. But, but here, Paul is, 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 is breaking this thing down. He says, you, 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 when you, the enemy want to disarm the believer by getting us entrapped in sin. He want to get us entrapped in lying and stealing and, and murder. Somebody say murder. And it's a murdering spirit running rampant in the city of Jacksonville. Not just Jacksonville, it's running rampant in the whole world. But certainly where we're from and where we are, we can see what's going on all around us. And, and, and we shouldn't be no perpetuator of killing. We should be no perpetuator of murder. We shouldn't be helping people have the ideology of killing people. We should be on the, on, on the side to where we're breaking it down. We got a revenge against that spirit. I'm, I'm attacking that spirit. And the way you attack that spirit is not in the flesh. Because we don't war in the flesh. We war in the spirit. And the way you war that spirit, you got to attack that spirit that's in the spirit. Somebody say in the spirit. Uh-huh. And we got all of these uh, uh, professional Christians who are going to tell everybody what they ought not be doing. You, you, how, you, you shouldn't be talking to the air. You ain't talking to no hell. You're talking to the spirit of hell. You're talking to the devil. Somebody help me out. You, you, when you, when you take it, when you in warfare, you warring against the, the devil. You warring against the spirit of the air. And the way you attack the spirit of the air, you got to attack it in the air. Can I get me a witness? You, you can't, you can't uh, fight against planes and you don't have none. <laughs> you, you just can't be shooting from the ground. Amen, somebody. Every, all the weapons don't work from the ground. You got to get, have on an even playing field. You got to be right there where the enemy is. You got to be flying in the air with them. And the way we fly in the air with the spirit of the air is through the spirit. Somebody says spirit. Through the, through the air, pneuma. The wind of God. You got, you got to fight the devil with his own weapons. He's invisible. You can't see him. So therefore, you got to fight him in the invisible. You got to fight him where, you, where he can't see you coming. Somebody say, he can't see me coming. I'm armed and dangerous. Lead the weapon and, and sin, lying and stealing and murder and hatred. Somebody say hatred. Well, some of us are still hating we still holding on to, to deep childhood hatred. I hate them. Uh, I don't, I, I, I despise them. I hope something bad happened to them. I, uh, I hope they died. I hope they, they get real sick and, and, and be gone. That's hatred. Somebody said that's hatred. Hatred is a murdering spirit. Y'all remember Cain and Abel? Uh, Cain hated his brother. He, he hated his brother and he killed him. He murdered his brother. Who you hate, you'll kill. You, when, who you hate, you'll get rid of. You'll find a way to get them, annihilate them, remove them. And that's what Cain did to his brother Abel. And when he killed him, the Lord said he, his blood was speaking out from the ground. His blood was calling out from the ground, his blood was telling on him. That, and one thing about uh, murder, when you murder somebody, their blood would tell on you. The blood would make it known that he killed me. Somebody said DNA, DNA, DNA. They're going to find you uh, when you messed up and then took somebody's life. Somebody said jealousies. 
Jealousy is another one of them uh, ways the enemy disarm us is through jealousy. And we see somebody uh, being successful, somebody moving around in the world, going up. And instead of going backwards, they're moving forward. They're going up and, and they're starting accomplishing things. And we'd be looking at them and with jealousy. I so, I so wish I had that. And then tell them, you're going to get your own. You're going to go take somebody else's stuff. But that's what jealousy do. You, you see somebody with a nice, beautiful wife and so you go and get your own wife you want to get that man's wife y'all help pastor today uh, y'all keep your eyes on me we ain't setting all this other stuff going on we know who that is but we good with that amen they got to go they got to do what they got to do but in the meantime we gonna still be here uh, somebody said jealousy. I've got to stay there a little bit longer. <laughs> jealousy. You riding, riding through the neighborhood and you see somebody in a nice house and, and now, now all of a sudden you want to you wanna go, go and, and, and get their house instead of getting your own house. Somebody said get your own. Get your own. Get your own. Jealousies. This young lady see this girl with this nice looking guy, sharp and intelligent, and she won't go get her own. She's gonna find a way to be slick and slimy and take her man. Get your own. Somebody say, get your own. Get, get your own. Get your own. Uh, jealousies. And then another way the enemy disarmed the believers. Y'all ready for this? Somebody say, adultery. Adultery is more than, than you committing a, a sexual act against your husband or your wife. It's you committing a sexual act against God. When you commit spiritual adultery, you, go, you hanging out with the enemy. You, you land up with the enemy, the devil. I'm talking about the devil now. I ain't talking about no, no person. I'm talking about the devil. Yeah, the devil got you. He, he got you hanging out with him. He got you smoking blunts with him and got you drinking with him and got you hanging out. Somebody say hanging out. I ain't hanging out with the devil no more. Somebody tell the devil, I'm giving it up. I'm giving it up. I, I refuse to commit spiritual adultery against God by hanging out with the devil, having intercourse with the devil. Intercourse uh, with the enemy is, an, is committing adultery against God. Man committing, he's married and he's having intercourse with another woman. That's natural adultery. That's adultery. Somebody said that's adultery. And watch this. You see, and when you do those kind of sins, when you sin, uh, do a sin like adultery and sin uh, like fornication and sin like pornography, you sinning against your own body. You're making it worse for yourself because now, now you're getting entrapped. Somebody say entrapped, entrapped, entrapped. Uh, I wish I had uh, 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 somebody else over here. I ain't going to call their name, but, but uh, entanglement. Somebody say entanglement. You, you find yourself getting entangled with the enemy when you start playing around with his stuff, when you start getting involved in pornography. Somebody said pornography. When you start getting involved in that kind of stuff and you know, you know, you, you, ain't, you ain't married, don't have no wife, don't have no husband, and you watching this stuff, the devil got you trapped. Somebody said trapped. And let me tell you something, these phones, these phones, you ain't even got to go look for it. You can just go to your page and you say, where that come from? You, 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 you say, can I get me a witness? <laughs> you, 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 you be on your phone and some, you get a text from somebody you don't even know who in the world that is. You say, who is that? And then they're trying to get you. Did somebody say entrapment? Entrapment to get you involved in an entanglement. They, they want to get you and they send you these uh, text messages to my hi. And then you look over, they say, I don't know, I don't know them. It's best not to even reply. Just go on and hit block. <laughs> go on flying block on your phone and delete that because it's a trap. Somebody says it's a trap. The enemy, uh, he set traps in all kinds of different ways. <laughs> and then you go to your Facebook page and you just tend to your own business and then something pops up <laughs> and then you hit that. And you, oh my God. So you ain't got to go looking for pornography. Pornography will come looking for you because that's called the enemy. So I say enemy. The devil is trying to trap you. The devil is trying to trick you. He's trying to lure you. But you got to understand and know 
that you are armed and dangerous and you're a lethal weapon. So you got to not mind dying for Jesus. Somebody say, I don't mind dying. I don't mind dying for Jesus. I don't mind checking out for Jesus. I ain't checking out for no devil. I ain't dying for no devil, but I'm going to die for the Lord. I'm going to stand for him, and I don't, I don't mind dying. I'm not scared to die because death is my friend. To die is gain. Somebody said it's a gain for me to die. He that if I die in the Lord, glory to God, it's a good thing. Somebody said it's a good thing because it's a gain for me. Now I'm, I'm being promoted. Now I'm being elevated from this world, from this corruption to incorruption, this mortal to immortality, glory to God. I'm going to a better place. I'm going up a yonder to be with my Lord. I'm going up a yonder to be with my Lord. I'm checking out of here. I'm going to a better place. I'm going to a, a better horizon. Why? Because I'm hooked up with him. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life, the rest of my days with him. I'm, I'm going to move from, from time to eternity. And then listen to me. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have already exempt yourself from time to eternity. Uh, I'm now living forever, Rick. Uh, I, I, may, I, may look, I, I may look like I'm, I'm standing up here and you remember uh, at least six to seven years of my life. You remember that? But I want you to know I'm beyond that now because I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm beyond six to seven now. I'm now living for eternity. I'm, I'm, my birthdays are eternity. Every time I have a birthday, I don't get another year. I move to another eternity. I'm I'm living perpetually for my Lord and Savior. I'm not living to die. I'm living to live. And while I'm living, somebody said, while I'm living. <laughs> while I'm living, I ain't scared to die because death is a good thing for a believer. <laughs> death is my friend. <laughs> death gets me to a better place. <laughs> Tell that neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm so glad I'm not afraid of dying. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm armed and dangerous. I I remember a young man by the name of David. David was uh, he was just minding his own business. Uh, he was minding his sheep and taking care of the sheep of his father but a bear came and snatched one of the lambs and ran away and David said oh no not the dead enemy he ran that bear down somebody help me preach he caught up with that bear he snatched that lamb from that bear and he slayed the bear he killed the bear and when David killed the bear he took the bear claws and he made him a, a chain and put that bear claws around his neck oh David had him some bragging rights when he had that around his neck somebody said that was his testimony and then another day came around tell that neighbor said David was armed and dangerous David was a lethal weapon because David didn't back down from no enemy David had a death wish and his death wish was to please God his death wish was to please his father I wish I had me somebody and then another day came by a lion came and snatched one of them lambs and began to run y'all know how ferocious a lion is but that lion didn't scare David David ran that lion down with the bear claws around his neck he remembered he slayed a bear when that bear took one of God's lambs and he caught up with that lion and he killed the lion. I wish I had me somebody. And David he adorned himself. He already had the claws of the bear around his neck and he put on the mane of that lion. I wish I had me somebody. David reminded himself that God was with me when I caught up with the bear and God's gonna be with me when I catch up with this lion. I wish I had 
Let me somebody. The Philistines decided to go against David's people. They decided to go against the people of God. And David got wind of that. And David asked his daddy. He said, Daddy, can I go and see how my brothers are faring? I wish I had me somebody. His daddy said, go ahead, David. And David got there. And David saw them hiding the Ricky in the foxhole. Now, y'all know we ain't like to run from nobody. Uh, don't let us find out you're running from somebody. We're going to take you right on back where, they, where you're running from because you ain't got no business running from them because if you run from them today, you're going to have to run again tomorrow. So you might as well go on, on and stand up against them. That's what David was doing. David saw them hiding and, and he, he said, what's going on? He said, y'all, don't, you don't see them feelings things. You don't see that giant up there. And David said, oh man, y'all going on. Uh, God, I ain't studying that giant. David stood up and David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this to defy the army of the Lord? Who is this? And that's what we ought to be saying against the devil. Who is this devil defying God's army, defying God's people? I'm standing boldly. The Bible says that the believer is there like, as bold as a lion. And David was so bold. David stood up and David said, oh yeah, I remember I slayed that, 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 that bear with my slingshot. I remember I slayed that that lion with my slang shot and today I'm going to do the same thing to this Philistine right here. I'm going to do the same thing to this giant right here and David took his slang shot y'all help me now. He took five smooth stones and he got them and took one of them stones and put it in his slang shot. Could you only imagine the, the big old tall giant he got his armor bearer standing up there in front of him and he got his spear and his sword and he's looking down at old David. He said, what that little dude think he doing? What do you think going to happen with that little stone he got in that slingshot? That thing, he matter of fact, he won't even get... He won't get past my helmet. I, I, I'm, I'm protected against that little thing. He, he can really throw up here. By the time he get up here, it'll be a little pebble. But he didn't know that there wasn't David's might in that stone. It was the power of God in that stone and David just took that, that slang shot and he was slinging somebody said he was slinging and he was whining he was whining it up somebody said in the name of the father he was whining it up in the name of the son he was whining it up in the name of the Holy Ghost and he released that stone and that stone went and hit that devil in his temple and, and the Bible says that Goliath hit the ground I wish I had me a witness. And when he hit the ground, David ran over there and stood up over him. Champion. I say champion. Glory to God. And David took the enemy's sword and chopped his head off and put it in a charger and went and took it to the king. Somebody say glory. God will give you a trophy. He already had one trophy of the bear. Another trophy of the lion. And now he got the trophy of Goliath. But somebody say it don't stop there because Goliath had some brothers down there in Anak. And David had to go and kill all the giants. Tell me, I'll tell that neighbor said, neighbor, we are giant slayers. Hey, I'm armed and dangerous. The devil can do anything he wants to, but he cannot stop us. Remember this and don't forget this. You're a suspect with the enemy. You're always going to be a suspect of the enemy. Glory to God. Tell me I say, suspect. In the time you find yourself with a suspicious spirit, just know that ain't God. Because the enemy always wants us to be a suspect. Suspicious. Somebody say suspicious. Like very superstitious. <laughs> Riding on the wall. See, we got to we cut that superstitious stuff out. That's the devil. Somebody said, that's the devil. Get out of that. 
The enemy wants to entrap you. The enemy wants to get an advantage over you. Don't give the devil an advantage. Stay away from sin. Say no. Somebody say, say no. Say no. 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 Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And stop trying to do it on your strength. And all one person can get rid of sin. And that's Jesus. Somebody said the blood. The blood of Jesus. Jesus. The disciples told the enemy in Acts chapter 4 and 12. He said there's no other name. Whereby man must be saved. And that's by the name of Jesus Christ. The one name. Deliverance. Deliverance come in the name of Jesus. And if you need to be delivered from anything. Go to Jesus. You need the upper hand on anything the enemy trying to entrap you with. Somebody say, go to Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord. Paul says it best in Romans. He said, for whosoever, Romans 10 and 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. All you have to do is just call on his name. Say, Jesus, save me. Jesus come into my heart. Right now, we want to give somebody an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you've been watching this, this message or listening to this message, God is talking to you. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. He's calling you and he's giving you the privilege, the opportunity to receive him as Savior. I got my mind made up. I'm going to serve the Lord. I got my mind made up. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to turn myself over to the Lord. I can't do it by myself. I remember when I was 22 years old, I, 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 I decided to give my life to the Lord. I decided to serve him. Now, you, you, you hear some people say it like this. I, I decided to give up the streets. I, you know, I, I, I did that before I got saved. <laughs> I decided to give the streets up before I got saved. I, got, I decided to stop being the corner boy and, and hanging out with the boys. I, I decided that before I got saved. But when I got saved, I decided to serve the Lord. I decided to give my life to him. I decided to, 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 to like, the, like the song says, I decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I, I didn't get saved to go back and forth. I didn't get saved to be in a tug of war with God and the devil because God going to win anyway. Ultimately, God is going to win the tug of war because the wages of sin will always be death. You'll always find yourself on the bad end of the stick when you're not serving the Lord. But it's best to give your life to him while you have a chance. Serve him now because I, I, I promise you everybody in this entire world have a, an expiration date. All of us going to check out of here one way or the other. We going to leave here. You ain't got to be sick. When death come a knocking. When it's time to go. Age ain't. No number. It don't matter. I want to be ready. Will you be ready? When Jesus come. The only way you're going to be ready. You're going to have to receive him as Lord and Savior. You're going to have to believe him. Somebody say I believe. That's it. Only believe. Only believe. That's the key. Is believing. And confession with your mouth believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord right now I want everybody to pray with me and I want you to repeat this prayer say father in heaven I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God I believe in my heart that Jesus is your son. 
and he died for my sins and the sins of the world. I accept you, Jesus, as my Savior, and I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Amen. If that's you, if you, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to just believe that. And I want you to just feed on that. Because like a baby, a newborn baby coming into the world, you got to be fed. That baby don't get no milk and no pablin. That baby ain't gonna make it. Tell that neighbor, say neighbor, you gotta eat. You gotta eat. And you gotta eat the word. You got to eat the word. The word is the nutrients, the nourishment of the believer. If you gave your life to the Lord and you're online, go on, like, go on the website and fill out that salvation card. Fill that card out. Let us know that that was you. That's, that was me. I gave my life to the Lord today. You got victory over sin now. Sin don't have victory over you. Also, I want to share this with you. If you gave your life to the Lord today, the angels in heaven, they're rejoicing. They're having a party in heaven right now because of you. You, you just caused a party to break out in heaven if you gave your life to the Lord. Blessings to you. Also, we want to take this opportunity to give you a, a, an opportunity to give you a chance to give. Somebody says, time to give. We're going to give you a, a chance to sow a seed into the I Am Church. Sow a seed of, of any amount. Amen. Let God touch your heart and what to give. And sow that seed today. Sow that seed. There's many ways in which you can give. If you got your, your Android or your Apple phone uh, with you and you want to give uh, by means of, of Cash App, you can do that. Also, if you got, I'm sure if you got a, a cell phone, that's your computer, you can go to the website. You can go anywhere on your phone. Amen. You can get there. Amen. On your phone. So, amen, we want to thank you, thank you for, for giving. Amen, we thank you for sharing your gifts and your seeds. Amen, with uh, us here at the I Am Church. This is Pastor Anthony Mincy. Also on tomorrow night, amen, 815, Miracle Monday. Oh, we've been having a time on Miracle Monday. Oh, yes, we have. We've been having a time, amen, on, on Miracle Monday. We've been seeing some miracles, uh, amen, transpiring. God is working miracles Amen on Miracle Monday. Amen. Also that on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we'll be back here on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, 600 Everson Street. Y'all come on, come on, come on and, and join with us. Come on and hang out uh, with your boy. Amen. We'll be happy to have you at the I Am Church. Amen. Amen. I believe all minds and hearts are clear. Again, we thank God for my lovely bride. Amen. Uh, amen. They, they celebrate Mama's birthday in Atlanta. Oh yeah, in hot Atlanta. Yes, I, I wish I could be there with them, but I can't be there in here. So I'm here. Amen. This is the place for me to be. Amen. Let's go. Everybody stand all over the building. Amen. Thank God for, amen, uh, my Reese, uh, Reese, amen, friend being with us today. Decided to come and hang out with us at church today. We're so happy uh, to have you with us today. Amen. And again, my friend, my dear friend, Ricky Derns. I tell you, boy. Uh, Lord know how to do it, don't he? <laughs> Amen. So lift that right hand all over the building, if you will. Repeat after me what I say unto one. I say unto all, watch and pray and love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now look across the room at that neighbor. Say, neighbor, before you leave, you owe me love, <laughs> so give it up. God bless you. We hope you were blessed by this worship experience here at the I Am Church. Make sure you share this message with your loved ones. Remember, there are three ways for you to give. Number one, website giving. Open your web browser and type in T-I-A-C-J-A-X dot O-R-G and click on the giving tab. Number two is given through Cash App. Open the 
Cash app on your Android or iOS device and enter your amount you'd like to give. And search the I Am Church and click send and you will get a confirmation. Number three is given through our church app. Go to the I Am Church app and click on the Give tab. And you will be able to give through your church app. Thanks for watching and we hope you were blessed. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel at T-I-A-C-J-A-X and like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you have not downloaded your church app, please go download our church app, go to your phone's app store and search The I Am Church and click download. For those who just gave their life to Christ or want to become a member here at The I Am Church, please visit T-I-A-C-J-A-X dot O-R-G forward slash connect and fill out the connect card. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week.